All right, guys, welcome back to another podcast. Um, today, we're sitting with Dr. Katie and Ben, of course. Uh, we'll be going through uh, a little bit more in-depth assessment of our onboarding performance and mentorship materials. Of course, last week, we went through kind of like the whole broad strokes, um, but this week, we're going to focus on the Tricor assessment. So here we go. Welcome to the podcast. But I did hear a drop today that may replace this one. <laughs> it was real good. Yes. So I don't think you can replace the music after getting compliments on the last Sure one. you can. That's the time to do it. Okay. Ask Freddie Mercury. That's <laughs> Freddie Mercury never made his best song. Yeah. Just that, you know, that was always his theory. That yeah. best, the, the best one is always the next one. Uh, I like so, that. I like that. Um, so here we are. Yes. yes. Diving yes. into uh, pretty, uh, pretty focused within our uh, onboarding side of the onboarding performance and mentorship. Um, but also does fit into all three parts yeah. because it it provides context from a data perspective. Um, yeah, this in, is kind of what we refer to as the tier zero. Yeah. So this is before yep. you're sort of, you know, you've applied, uh, whether it be on the mentorship side or you've applied on the employment side. Mm -hmm. It's like you said, it's kind of that first little bit on, okay, you're interested in us. Well, we would also like to you know, be interested in you. Right. You know, this is right. one of the, one of the tools we do that. So, um, a lot of times, uh, so this is a, a context. This is where I came from. Yes. So I yes. apologize to everybody that you're probably going to have to listen to me talk a lot. Yes. Um, yes. but it is, uh, the, the tricor as we refer to it, otherwise known as, uh, advanced insights or other items, uh, depending on the branding, because it is used by multiple companies, um, is essentially the, the, how, the, why and the what of, of behavior. Uh, and, and it puts it into uh, specific data points so that it can not only be uh, used on a one-to-one -one basis, but also comparatively measured between individuals to understand where strengths lie, where weaknesses lie, where potential conflicts are, um, and where, uh, where you could potentially maximize on your team. So, yeah. and that was, I think the big selling point for us is, you know, I think when it was first introduced to us, like I had a disc assessment, um, initially. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you know, we did disc with my last employer. It was fun. It was kind of like a team building type yeah. activity to go to, but that's kind of like my perspective on personality testing is it's kind mm -hmm. of like this, like you said, it's this individual process where it's like, Oh, here's my personality. I'm an I, but it's like, ah, I don't need to know more about myself. I need to know how I integrate into a team and what mm -hmm. tools that mean and how other people are. Um, and that's where I think this, this is a very, very valuable tool, um, in that capacity. Yeah. So I, I have used this tool in, in almost uncountable number of ways, yeah. uh, whether it is from that more like I always refer to them as talent audits. So you're going to be comparative uh, between the entire team to individual, like, I don't want to call it counseling, but that's similar conversations. Um, when you get to the one-on-one. -on -one. When you get to the one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. And then yeah. um, a, a number of different ways in between. Uh, heavily used within our recruiting side uh, yeah. and, and the hiring side. Not to say that there is a right or a wrong. Assessment. Excuse me. Right. Yeah. But it is about... Um, the, the understanding of what we're looking for um, and how aware that individual is of their actual tendencies. So a lot of times, like if, if you are a specific behavioral type and you, and you actually show it, like typically that's actually a strength versus you're steering the results think, thinking that you want this job, but you're actually this person whenever yeah. we talk automatically like bye yeah because you're, yeah. you're either lying to yourself which is probably worse than or right. you're lying to us <laughs> <laughs> right. which is also bad yeah well and so. it, com it comes back to our individuality component mm -hmm. you know it's like you said you're not interviewing for the you know as a person that you think we want you to be yeah it's, it's more so on like no like honestly just be yourself mm -hmm. you know and it's not to say that every attribute of every human being is a admirable attribute. I think there are times where we are ourselves and maybe sometimes that compromises our integrity, but in owning that, mm -hmm. I think then saying this is who I am. However, I'm willing in that accountability ladder, I'm willing to accept that this one part of me probably doesn't make me a very good team player. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, I would also like to have the opportunity to grow this part. And I think that's then kind of, you know, uh, like with one of our employees um, who shares a similar personality trait to Katie, like approaches you and saying, Hey, 
I constantly have this type of interaction conflict yep. and I don't actually know how to stop this interpersonal conflict. How do you do it? Yeah. Right. Yep. Well, and it, yep. Sorry. And I mean, getting back to, I mean, the tool is only as good as like what you're going to use, you know, what you're going to use it for. Mm -hmm. We could all take this assessment. And if we just say, Oh, here it is. And then don't continue to utilize it. Yeah. It's just like any other. It's like an ultrasound machine that just sits and collects dust. <laughs> Correct. Yes. It doesn't yes. do you any good if it's not actually being utilized. Yes. Um, and, and what I say to that employee is like, oh, I feel your pain because that was me 15 years ago. Right. I've been there. I've had those growing pains. <laughs> yeah. And I think that it wasn't I mean, easy. Yeah, no. And I think that's part of why we lump together the onboarding performance and mentorship all sort of together for that exact point, you know, is saying, no, we don't want all of our team members to be the same, but there's going to be team members who are like you and being further in their life, personal life, mm -hmm. or their sort of professional career, like you probably have had similar variables or similar conflict. Um, and I think that's what I liked most about this tool because it was so in depth. I mean, it is so in depth that when we had gone through it the first time, it was this switch that had flicked off in my head. And I was like, ah, we are all numbers. Yes. You know, like to mm -hmm. me, I actually had a lot of, um, it was a release for me, mm -hmm. you know, and saying like, I have all these thoughts in my head and I have this and it's like, you know, I, I know I'm an individual and I just, you know, and it's, it, it, you start to then kind of, I don't want to say, I don't, think victimization is the correct word but I think sometimes when you get trapped into your own head and assuming that your struggle is only your struggle mm -hmm. you then start to you are reluctant to reach out to people and saying I am struggling with this I need help mm -hmm. well who do you start if you have again as we get through this you have a really really high D personality and you go to an I personality and it's like I need your help with this it's just going to probably create conflict you know well, it, yeah. not in every circumstance if you don't know what you're talking about or why it's <laughs> yes why it's creating yeah, some resistance not, or even can. vice versa. I would say an I to a D, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. just say, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, but again, I, that's, I think the tool wise, I'll bring it back to my point was that, um, I liked that it did categorize so many different behaviors mm -hmm. that it actually, um, I felt better about myself and actually my role within that team. I, mm -hmm. I think it's a very, very important tool for that. Uh, another big key to this specific uh, assessment versus others, the one that I uh, would tend to uh, compare it to is Myers-Briggs mm -hmm. because DISC is, is the first portion of this. A lot of people are familiar with DISC and we'll get further into what that means. But Myers-Briggs is different because what it does is it takes 16 types of people and places you as this type of person. Um, for some people that works, for some people it doesn't. Um, personally, not a big fan of that because what it says is this is who you are. Right. And uh, we're even the lowest common denominator of us. We are still dynamic people. Like yeah. I can choose to behave in a specific way. It doesn't like it, I'm not one type of person. Yeah. I can adapt to um, you know, specific scenarios yeah. or just adjust uh, based on what's going on. So uh, yeah. this this set of data provides tendencies, yes. not this is who you are. It's yes. this is who you tend to be. Yeah. Um, and that di that dynamic part, I think that's a yeah. perfect word that there's so many, it's like, oh, that's like when we get to the pressure part. Oh, well, when you're under pressure, you mm -hmm. have a tendency to act like this. Right. Like to even know from a simple quiz that you could ascertain this much data is remarkable. Yeah. Uh, especially when you get down to the, the third portion and we'll get there. But that the my favorite way to explain that is it just confuses you into actually tapping into your subconscious a little bit yeah. and says, how are you actually thinking about this? Because yeah. it doesn't make any damn sense. Yes. Um, so yeah, the I guess we'll just start to dive in. What we'll do um, uh, for those that are listening and those that are watching is we'll actually link the three uh, sure. assessments for myself, for Katie and for Carlos. So you guys can kind of follow along. They are 77 pages, but we're only going to refer to three pages. Yeah. Uh, the 77 is for um, continuous reading, continuous learning, uh, so you can understand the individual parts um, on, a, on a deeper level, but they really do culminate into three different pieces. Yeah. And, and the first one, again, we, uh, that we start off with is, is the how. So uh, this is the face value, typically how we tend to behave. Um, why is that important? That's typically where our uh, initial conflicts do come from but also some of our biggest uh, communicative strengths or weaknesses as well. So uh, the funny part about this is uh, Carlo, Katie, and myself, uh, we only share 
uh, between the three of us, one variable <laughs> in common. The, the, the remainder is actually different between the three of us. So um, moving left to right, D, dominance. It's the it's the individual that with the, the high D type personality. And sorry, not to interrupt. We're starting out with the disc profile. The disc so profile. Yes. yes. We're starting with. I'm just, sorry. <coughs> only I've done the, this so yes, many times, yes, yes. and I typically have paper in yes, front of me, and I'm yes. flipping through it. So if this starts to not make sense, yes, please this stop is the me. First of three parts. And it's just, yes. If you watch it, it's much easier. But again, yes. for the listeners, we're starting out with the first part, which is disc. Disc is beha- a behavioral assessment on yes. four uh, key variables: uh, D dominance, I. Um, uh, which is interactive or outgoing nature, S, stability, C, critical. Um, so again, moving that left to right, D, dominance, uh, otherwise a driver, sometimes people refer to it as. Uh, really, the way that I think about this person is the one who puts the helmet on, sees the brick wall, and just bashes their way through it because they know that the result is on the other side of the wall. Um, that's just an ambulance. Yeah, thank you. That's yeah. uh, or yeah, or yeah. police officer, yeah, whatever. Right. Okay. They're just coming for you. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not a leaf blower. Yeah, not this time. Um, out of the three of us, uh, and one of the things that we have had multiple conversations about, without actually referencing the specific sure. data point, yes. is the fact that Katie, out of, I think everyone that I've ever seen in Paw, uh, has the highest uh, D in behavioral trait. So hardest I would driver. That. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I think I think our our mentee was close. Okay. Uh, but not quite to your level. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm I'm kind of in the middle, and then Carl, yours is actually a little is actually below the energy line. So the forty to sixty would mean it exists, but you don't really you, you use it as a tool if you have to. Yours is actually you tend to be more methodical, mm-hmm. so lower uh, more um, more think first. Um, not to say that you don't think about what you're doing, but it's it's the it, it's either the I'm just gonna get there or I'm gonna strategize my way around it. And there are different ways uh, that people do approach these things. So um, I, I think that this is a, a great place to start because this is probably one of the uh, because of the way the industry tends to be uh, constructed with behavioral types, one of the biggest barriers that you've probably gotten over in your career. Um, and I've seen it, I, I, I mean, I see it as a strength, but a lot of times without context, this could actually be seen as a great weakness for people. Right. Yeah. And, um, like going back to the employee that, you know, we, we can recognize because we are using this tool that her and I both have high D and she's, you know, earlier in her career. And so when she's having like the, the conflict with employees and the feedback that, oh, you know, Molly's. Molly's doing this again or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that she can come to me, like I didn't have anyone that I could go to. Cause mm-hmm. one, I sort of knew it existed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was always a little bit different than the rest of my coworkers um, mm-hmm. from a, just a right behavioral personality type. Um, but like I said, it wasn't like pinpointed like, oh, this is why. Mm -hmm. Um, and so Mm -hmm. part of it is like, oh yeah, now, now it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that I, I understand it and realizes, realize it also allows me to kind of reflect and, and work on kind of softening the edges a little bit, Mm -hmm. um, because I can be being very direct all the time, even if I'm not being intentional in it can come across as, harsh or um bitchy yeah <laughs> yeah i was trying to avoid the, the b word but yeah, ooh, no, yeah. Uh, unf- it's pretty much where like like i don't know a two podcasts ago where it was like i love bitches yes you know i mean like that that, was, that, that was yeah. a lot more than two yes. ago yeah we've done yeah. this a lot Carl. i have no yes. clue it like we just talk that like and then, yeah, it's fine. But that's fine either way yeah anyway, the days run together but that, yeah. that's what the story of this is yeah you know is it's like you said some people may see it as a weakness but i think it's a significant attribute um and i think part of that is comparing the the two different assessments between Katie and I. I remember when we first went through it, we were mm-hmm. kind of described as that power couple, you know, essentially saying what I don't have, she does, and so on, you know, vice mm-hmm. versa, what, mm-hmm. you know, she doesn't have, I have. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, <clears throat> you know, like you said, uh, it's a, a big part of that low D, I think, is probably how um, actually uh, Rachel, one of our other employees, uh, she had said that um, I answer questions 
to, you know, I give answers to questions you didn't know you had asked. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that like strategy component. I right. think a lot of people see me as not being very direct. Mm -hmm. uh, but in my mind, it's actually like, oh, well, if I don't paint this entire picture for you, you're not actually going to understand that I am being direct with you. I'm just using 17,000 more words. Yeah. You know, well, that's also highlighted in a couple other yeah. ways <laughs> throughout this yes. too, <laughs> yes. which is important because uh, again, that, that just leads towards the dynamic yeah. nature because I have, there are people that are lower uh, D, yeah. but also very like direct in the way that they think. Yeah. So again, it's like, I'm not boxing you into one yeah. type of person. It's yeah. just like, as a general rule, like if, if you're just governing behavior, we kind of understand what we're going to get. Um, and, and absolutely like that does, 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 does this have value? Does this have strength? Yes, because you can just more naturally be more direct than other people. You're definitely more direct than your counterpart yes. on pretty it makes much me most occasions. To be that direct, right? I couldn't do it. I, there's no you way you can. <sighs> you if you really, really yeah. try, but it's uncomfortable. It's definitely yeah. outside of yeah. who you tend to be. Yeah. It's not impossible though. No, no. You usually just, my it's like I usually have to get my anger threshold high enough. Yes, and then yes. it's just like okay let's do this but that that leads me to the the point of this understanding of variables is it's you have strengths and you have strengths you also both have weaknesses right so when it comes to being the very methodical type like explain the big picture type person like generally that's like you're able to do it right but it's most of the time i think the thought goes to just do it like Correct. just do the job yes. like i know what the result is let's yeah. just pile through well, it yeah. that's my favorite part about d's it is like <laughs> they have all the thoughts to get them to the end and they say the one thing and that's exactly it so when and where the a lot of the communication struggles are you've had the conversation in your head yeah and you only actually verbalize the last piece mm -hmm. and then you know, people with other like communication styles are like, well, what, did, what did she mean by that? It's like, what do you mean? What did I mean by that? Mm -hmm. I, you know, cause in my head, yeah, I said exactly what I meant. Right. You just, <laughs> <laughs> you may not have been ready for it, Yeah, you know, but right. what, uh, um, it's not, it's not that I love you anyways, but it's, um, uh, Jen had described the D a different way. Um, where it's, is it a bitch because they love you? Is, is that what it is? Oh, Something it's, like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 It was like, you know, that mm -hmm. basically when the answer comes to you, that it's actually very well thought out. It probably isn't exactly what you want to hear all the time. However, the majority of the time it's what you need to hear. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's that bitter medicine. Yes. Yes. You yes. might not like the way the Metro and is all taste. Uh, right. Yes. <laughs> but it'll work. Yes. Right. <laughs> it will definitely help with the anxiety I'm about to give you. <laughs> yeah, um, I should say the secondary result of that. Anyway, moving on. But yeah. So uh, again, like it's really just about understanding the strengths. Uh, the other thing that I do want to point to specifically as it relates to this variable is um, if you are a part of a clinic's team and you feel like you don't fit in because you're really direct and people think you're mean this is probably why yeah right. like 10 because again like very few people and i've seen uh, within the paw health context between recruits and actual just uh, staff probably about 400 different uh assessments I would say less than 10% have a high D. Huh. Um, so again, like considering the industry as a whole, most people don't have this. Most people tend to be very, um, very uh, heavier on the softer uh, behavioral side because, you know, right. it's, it's you know they're animal is. lovers, right? right? Yeah. Uh, not, not, to, not to stereotype or say that that's who we are, yeah. but it does yeah. tend to attract that type of person. So um, yeah, it, 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 the thing that I had told our mentee when she, she had no idea what uh, what was going on because she feel she felt like she didn't fit in. Was yeah, don't fit in. That's that's a good thing, All right? Because what it does is it provides you a, a level of uh, a, a dynamic that um, you're going to be able to, pro to provide to a team better than anybody else that you're around, um, and understand the strengths of it, but also understand the weaknesses that is like, Oh, maybe I shouldn't have this conversation right now. <laughs> or maybe somebody else should have this conversation because they're going to deliver it better to this person. Um, 
That one is probably one of the more polarizing ones. Yeah. And uh, as we get into the uh, adaptive profile too, after we run through all of these, we'll really see where it shines through. Um, but moving to the next variable, interactive, outgoing, engaging, uh, the high I, uh, I'm maxed out. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and it's, it, it's, uh, th this is actually where uh, Katie and I almost flip mirror images of each other. And Carla, yours, yours is a, a bit higher as well. So, um, uh, you know, surprising to some, but not to all. Katie tends to be more introverted, um, especially compared to Carlo and myself, which, you know, if you've ever interacted with the three of us, yeah. it does make sense. <laughs> right. <Yes>. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but really, uh, the the higher the eye, the more the individual uh, tends to talk, but also tends to uh, want to create um, ideal experiences for people. So, for my role being caregiver support staff, like this is what I lean on the most. I'm going. I'm trying to craft an experience for caregivers that is as ideal as possible. Um, and then uh, for, for lower I tend people, again, tend to be just be more introverted and focused on other ways of doing that, um, whether it's through getting to a result right, yeah, or performance. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or getting things done like perfectly or, yeah. or in some other way. But I'm going to talk my way there. I'm going to communicate as well as I can to make sure that they understand what's going on or whatever it might be, at least to the best of my ability. Um, then I don't, I, I mean, besides that, uh, there's not really a whole lot of, uh, to talk about in terms of this variable because people generally understand the difference between introvert and extrovert. Um, and I, and I don't really have to focus a lot of time on it. Um, I just like to apologize to people when I tell them that I'm a 99 I cause right. I do never shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it rolls right off me. I don't, you know, like even when we have, I think one of our, one of our employees, another one of the employees now is a really, really high eye. Um, and I know she, at least in some capacity, a lot of staff didn't know how to read her. Yeah. You know, and like, honestly, everyone was like, oh, don't you? And I'm like, I honestly have no idea what anyone around here is talking about. I'm like, I think she's very pleasant to be around, you know, very engaged, but it's like, if you're not used to just that high eye, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it can sometimes be like, you know, uh, give me my quiet space, please. And you do have to put a curb on it sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. What the, I guess the, the biggest thing that, that we've had, that I've had to coach people that are very high eye is learn when to put your nose down and just go. Yeah. Like learn when you have to, f you know, stop flapping your lips a little right, bit right, and right. work Yeah. because yeah. there is definitely a time to be engaging, to be pleasant, to create good experiences, but there's right. also a time to lean on your other strengths yeah. and not babble about it right. or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, that was one of the biggest, um, learning curves that I had personally and understanding like, Oh, I really do like to be this person. How do I use it? Yeah. Um, and then, so yeah, uh, moving on, uh, the S is stability or, uh, the, the, I guess the easiest way to explain the S variable is the higher it is, the more, uh, the, the slower the pace, the more poised you tend to be. Um, and then lower, uh, I, I don't like the adjective frantic, but very fast paced, um, tend to, uh, tend to move very quickly. Um, we're all, uh, you guys are actually identical, um, uh, in, uh, these, the, uh, natural style being just above the energy line. So you're able to hold it together pretty well, but it's not like you're just, you know, slowly turning the wheel. You just understand that, uh, there is value to making sure everybody comes along with you, but you're still uh, out ahead of it, leading the charge. Um, people that are, um, are higher than, uh, above 80 tend to be like the ones in back, of the of the group like making sure everybody's coming along so uh that that one's uh the, the lower s i actually i wish a lower s so um i'm always going yes. I, I tend to be very high energy uh sometimes that weirds people out it really weirds super high s people out so we've actually hired a couple people recently that are very high s and i'll just start explaining something like super fast yeah. <laughs> and they just look at me like deer in the headlights yeah. like can you slow down 
Yes, yes. I can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying something because uh, yes. I didn't realize that. I'll do that to caregivers too sometimes where like I, I've, I've said the words of whatever our, our caregiver experience is yeah. like so many times yeah. that it's like, <laughs> I sound like the dude giving the disclaimers for, you know, TV meds. <laughs> the micro machines guy. Yes. And, um, and the, they just kind of look at me like, oh, so, so then yes. for me, that's why I create like laminated things yes. to hand to them. Like I just said that really fast. Here's this. Yeah. I need to get this into our process. Right. Yeah. Um, yes. And I'm more than happy to answer questions that you do have. <laughs> Um, this one I'll actually touch to the adaptive as well. So what you guys will see when you look at this uh, online is uh, the gray bars are adaptive style. So how we tend to behave under pressure. The most common uh, tendency that I have seen in these pr more than thousand of these uh, assessments is that the S comes down under pressure. Generally speaking, I, it, it's probably an American culture type item. Um, when the pressure's on, we tend to move faster. Yeah. Right. We tend to uh, we tend to get a little bit frantic. When the pressure's really on for me, I go down to a ten. Like I really start to like like even breathe heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Give a dad sweats. I, yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, for those unfamiliar, those are worse than the meat sweats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Moving on to C. Yes, we're going to just skip uh, right past all of you those. Know, I didn't actually think when we started doing these podcasts 20 some odd hours ago or whatever even episode we're on. I don't even know anymore. I never actually thought meat sweats was going to come into uh, <laughs> to a podcast. It's a very and real here, thing, Carl. Here we are. It's a very real here thing. Here we are. I couldn't be more happy. Um, and, yeah, so then jumping over to C, again, critical, uh, critical nature. So attention to detail tends to be what this one is. Uh, we are... All three of us are actually almost identical in the fact that it, it's it's present, it's there. We can we use it when we have to, but it's not the ultimate um, the way that we behave. We don't lead with that trait. We have other traits that tend uh, to shine above it. It's a tool in the arsenal um, to to use so that we can make sure that we do all of these other things accurately when they do happen. Um, in your guys's context, medical record keeping is probably where this is going to shine through the best right. because it's like, I just, I, I might not want to do this to the level of maybe say some of our other doctors even. Um, but you know, you have to, so you, you utilize that skill set. Yeah. I mean, we should look at that in context of the other three parts for us to all have that critical nature and really not even much of a drop on the adaptive style. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, this is a pretty much under pressure or not under pressure. We have the same level of critical thinking. We just do it differently. You right. know, Katie's very, very high D. You're very, very high I, you mm -hmm. know, I'm kind of mid range on the IS, but it's like, you know, at the end. <clears throat> while our sort of natural behavior is that we're going to act one particular way, it still comes from a place of very high critical thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, again, when people look at us in different ways, like if you're appearing more frantic, mm -hmm. you're appearing more conservative, and I'm just doing God knows what, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, still all very, very critical and, um, you know, uh, very methodical. Right, right. Uh, and, and making sure that the, the details aren't, aren't being left by the wayside yeah. is the, uh, probably Correct. a better way to put it because yes. those that I have uh, met in my life that are, that tend to be low C, um, uh, actually things uh, slip through the I'll, cracks. I'll, 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 I'll use her as an example cause she won't get mad about it. But Jen is a low C at both natural and adaptive. Um, and I, for those that don't know, I worked yeah. with Jen for years yeah. and, uh, it, what what it was is she understood that that was a weakness. So it's like I need to put people around me yeah. to catch the stuff that gets dropped. Yeah, because I yeah. know where I'm going. Yeah, and I know that it's a good place. Yeah, but I just understand that I'm going to miss things because I see where I'm headed. Yeah. kind of put the blinders on a little bit and and barrel forward. Excuse me. So, uh, so yeah, that's the four variables. We are all different in, in all four of these um, and, and have our own general tendencies. So kind of going with the natural side, you know, Katie's being a D, uh, C, S would be the three primaries there. Um, task oriented, but also, you know, able to make sure everybody kind of comes along. You're going to lead the charge towards the result, not necessarily focus on feelings per se in the way that you communicate, but it's like, guys, this is where it is. Let's go. Right. 
um, for Carlo and, and, and ISC or ICS either way, they're pretty much in the middle, going to be uh, pretty people oriented, but also have a good attention to detail. Again, focusing on, on the team, making sure everybody's coming along for the ride. And then for me, I'm an IC on both natural and adaptive. Um, I'm an outgoing critic. <laughs> yes. One of my greatest strengths, one of my greatest weaknesses. <laughs> I tend to be very direct with people yes. <laughs> in the fact that I just say things, yes. not necessarily because I see the result and it's like, no, you're going to do this. I'm going to grab you by the shirt collar, kind of like Katie does. Uh-huh. It's like, I just say it. I tend to, uh, yeah, just, yeah, I tend to just yeah. forget to High shut up sometimes. Critic, yes. Uh, and then the adaptive, uh, uh, what what uh, what Katie, you go from that that, that stability comes down uh, quite a bit. You tend to move really fast. Mm-hmm. So again, looking at that from a strengths perspective, it's like n- very few people are going to get stuff done more efficiently and more effectively than you under pressure. However, you're going to leave some people in your wake. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the proverbial heads will roll. Yes. Uh, not the, even the, not, I the, mean, it's like the accidental heads yes. will roll because right. the result has to be yes. achieved. Yes, the right. Roman decimation. I mean it's <laughs> 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 No. I mean yeah. It's, only every now and then. Yeah, only now and then. But no, I again not I mean we poke fun, but the reality is exactly that. Like she has no change in that critical uh, critical skill under pressure. It's just like, guys, we gotta get this shit done right. and stop screwing around. Like shit has to get done and we're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Um that's yeah, I think that's what Or I'm gonna do it and, and like, you're not and gonna beca- like it. Well <laughs> and because I'm doing it and I don't like all like and I'm going to be introverted about it. Like, it's just going to get done. You're going to think I'm mad, but I'm just yeah, doing not it. Not going to talk about it. It's right. just you've proven you're not getting it done. I'm just going to have to do this. Mm-hmm. Which, again, I think we kind of brought up in past podcasts as well about accountability that I think there's a, I, I would say the weakness in that is that now, again, with you being in a position of administration, you have the ability to get the job done, but then equally hold people accountable for not having got the job done. Mm-hmm. Whereas if, you know, again, the, it's different if you have multiple employees who, if you have, uh, uh, you know, sort of same tier type employees who have a similar personality trait, they may end up then just getting the job done. And so-and-so is going to be able to fall back on their heels a little bit and be like, oh, well, if she's just not going to say anything and bowl over me and just have it done anyway, and she's probably mad, then screw it. I'm just going to let her do it. Mm -hmm. It's like, that would be then where the weakness component to it, it's not a bad thing because the result, I mean, we talk about our after action report, Mm -hmm. you know, the result is still there Mm -hmm. you know we still succeeded in what that was however Mm -hmm. you know like you said there's going to be a little bit of a wake but again when we look at this it shouldn't be that we should forget the other components of accountability the other parts of these team building um but again that's the more serious note on us of course just making the joke of roman decimation um (laughs) but the uh you know because the results there right and it's 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 task oriented but even to to that point those that are untrained that are very high dcs actually do tend to be the ones that lay the most people out they they tend to hold people accountable by crushing them (laughs) and i mean i i've experienced those people uh whether in in different contexts but i I mean you kind of probably had to train yourself out of that at least a little bit yeah yes um it's and it's still I try really, really hard not to just bowl people over. Like I will have the converse again, like the conversation in my head so that, you know, this is what I want to say. And I uh, like want to tone it, like tone it down, not be as direct. Mm -hmm. And it still will come across most Mm -hmm. of the time is like, wow, Katie just like really on a rampage today. It's like, nah, man, like I'm just (laughs) saying like, let's do this. Like, or or this is the problem. Like, what's, how are you going to like fix it? Or what's your solution? And like, tell me how you want to do this. And Mm -hmm. it's like complete shutdown. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, okay. Mm. Start over. It does instill fear (laughs) quite a bit. Uh, in, 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 especially in those that are, are lower on the, on the D side. So, um, yeah, it, it can be, it can be difficult. Um, but the other thing too, that you will tend to do is actually voice it to somebody like myself the first time. Like I need to say this 
so that I get the edge off. Like I and I <laughs> like I'm going I'm going to communicate this in yep. a, in the very direct way so that my I can think about it verbally yep. and then reconstruct the words so it's not as harsh. Right. And that's not like some people would see that as a, as a weakness. Like I see the awareness of that as a major strength because you understand the fact that if you don't do that that way, yeah, you're probably going to like potentially hurt somebody (laughs) feelings wise. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a big one. And then like for me, uh, you know, being the, the IC, like I I'll, I'll do that, uh, sometimes, uh, with, with mostly with Annie where it's like, Annie, I really just want to tell people how to do something really, really well. But what's happening right now, because I'm not really in that great of a mood is <sighs> I just am coming off like a dick <laughs> because like, I don't, I have to say this, like, It's literally eating me inside, not saying something, but I'm going to be really critical to them. Like, this is how you did this wrong here, 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 here. Well, and I actually, I I love that. I I actually (laughs) sent an email this morning to one of our employees because we were working on a case together. And as anyone can tell, I have a cold. Mm -hmm. So I was losing my voice and it had been a long day already. And I was kind of, I was in the get done mode. So Mm -hmm. that S yeah, just that <laughs> had gone to the basement. <laughs> um, and, but even, even in that moment, I still, um, and we'll get to like being high theoretical or really involved in liking to like learning aspects. So I was talking her through like some different points of anesthesia and I didn't realize it till again, I got home. It's like, okay, did she realize that I was just having a conversation or did it come across as, why didn't you know this? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I just shot her an email this morning, like, Hey, it was, it was just like a discussion because I know you like to learn about anesthesia. And so I thought you did a great job overall. And I hope that, you know, you understand that. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, especially with the way that uh, you tend to communicate and and on all three of us having that higher attention to detail. When you link that to the way that we think in terms of accountability, that's typically what happens, right? We tend to just jump to solution. We tend to see all of the details and be like, I just want you to succeed. Here's the solution. Right. And we forget to compliment people along the way or, or whatever, or, or, you know, take them on the journey, right? That's uh, typically right. What, what tends to be missing. Like if, if you just see the result and say, this is what it is, just do it. Well, why? And that's where Carlo comes into play. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, yeah. a, a, a good thing to, that we constantly have to remind ourselves on is like, yes, like yeah. we do want to implement solutions, but we also need to be complimentary of people as they're getting to that point right. as well. Yeah. Right. And that's what I think when we kind of talk about how our, our biggest goal is to have in the moment accountability without actually ever having to discuss accountability, mm-hmm. you know, as kind of a guide to behavior. When we talked about core values and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in that context, you know, and just, just getting people to where you need them to be, especially from an accountability standpoint in the moment, accountability sometimes is unachievable with certain types of personality sets where it's like, you know, like you say, if you just bull through them and it's like, you know, Oh, you know, she was this way, she was that way, you know, whatever happens to be, there may be that perception from one half of the interaction on one hand, Katie's like, Oh, I'm just, you know, this is fine. I'm just having this conversation. I haven't been to tell you, you know, on the other side, it's like, Oh, well there's kind of this whole emotional part and it would be viewed as if there was this uh, unnecessary conflict between employees. Yep. But that's where you kind of saying like to get to the results part is like, I'm just, no, I'm just providing this to you. But the strength, strength of what we've been able to do from our accountability process and through, you know, profiles and so on and so forth is that Katie then was comfortable enough to send that email the next, you know, this morning or whatever it was in this interaction that she had. Um, and then just again, regained accountability to that said, Hey, I may have come off this way. I know my personality is this way. That's not the way that I intended it. The email may have been entirely unnecessary. The employee may not have even had anything in any capacity. However, Mm -hmm. there was a solution implemented for a problem that may not have existed. Mm -hmm. I think that's an amazing level of core value to yeah. be honest because it, mm-hmm. it's it's showing it's that you're yeah it's unity and right. respect mm-hmm. you know to say hey i don't know if i was actually not being respectful i feel like i was because i was trying to teach you something and it was just you know it was kind of a get her done moment mm-hmm. uh, but then to make sure that those core values were upheld and just a simple hey 
right. you know, and that way it doesn't spin off into being a one week, a one month, a three month affair where it was like, oh, this one time back then I was trying to do anesthesia on this patient and the doctor was kind of being a snatch because it was late at night and, you know, whatever it was. And then, you know, coming back to like, oh, that's not actually how she meant it. So there's self-awareness, there's mm -hmm. team awareness, there's core value alignment. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to juggle in just that one interaction. That's why, like I said, in the moment, accountability may be difficult because you may not even know that you aren't achieving it. Right. You know, but the other thing too, aware. that goes along with that is setting yourself vulnerable to be accountable to your own actions. Sure. Well, yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Like if yeah. you were actually being that way, you're actually setting the stage for somebody to be like, yeah, I didn't really perceive it that way. Like this is how I would prefer it moving forward. Like, can we meet in the middle here somewhere? Let's find a compromise because yeah, you put a DC with an IS, <laughs> Like in the moment, accountability is extremely difficult because yeah. any time that in uh, the the IS, the way that I refer to it as typically is the counselor pattern, the very, very people focused DC task, like yeah. polar opposites. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you have that conversation in the moment, typically the DC person sees the IS person as not wanting to get anything done. And the other way is like, the, D, the, IS, the IS person thinks the DC person hates them, <laughs> hates them. I think the, the morning routine, Carlo comes into the clinic and it's, hey, everybody, I'm going to go, I'm going to stroll over here. What's going on over there? What what you guys do last night? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a preamble to getting the day started. Mm -hmm. And, and I know like I come in, it's like, yep, good morning. Okay. What's going on? Yep. <laughs> you just go straight. To Switzerland, or right, right. <laughs> like what patients are here, what's on the hospitalized board, right, right. What, what needs to get done. Right, yep. <laughs> um, and like Monday's a good example. It was busy. And so, my like, I walked into patients that needed to be seen, patients that needed to be, you know, caregivers that needed to be updated. So the S went down, the DC came full force. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure people on Monday morning were just like, what is happening? What is happening right I now? I may have gotten that text message. Sure. <laughs> like, I'm afraid. <laughs> sure. Uh, and I was like, yeah, you're all right. You're, it's fine. It's yeah. just what it you is. You just got to get stuff done. And mm -hmm. you're just going to have to adapt to it a little bit because stuff has to get done, too. Right. Like, acknowledge the strength that is on that team. Right. And then understand where you fit in with it to, to continue to uh, em empower everyone's strengths. Um it from from wherever you come from so uh yeah that's uh it, the, the reason that we bring all of these scenarios up is because you look at four i mean eight data points but four categories and like just in within this if you were to look at a team of 12 or or even even just uh you know like a like a day shift team you've got one two three four like six, six. people right. roughly like you can have such a, a massive dynamic between six different people, depending on who's there, or you can have way too much alignment between six people too, where it's like, you're all doing the same thing and you completely miss a variable from a caregiver or something like that. And it, it's not so much that one way is right. One way is wrong. It's about understand who is here. What strengths do we have on board? What weaknesses do we have? How do we utilize that knowledge to uh, get our job done extremely well uh, as it relates all the way down to core values and then everything uh, beyond that? So, and this is just behavior. Right. This is the surface level stuff. Right. So, and when you get down into the uh, page three, uh, of, of the, uh, which is the second graph of, of the, the full assessment. And that is our, our values index motivational profile. Some refer to it as this is the, the motivators. Yeah. This is the why, yeah. why do I get out of bed in the morning? Why do I show up? Um, and this is similar, but different to our ultimate purpose. That is serve the patient. Um, we, we all, um, we all we, we are all here uh, on the Paw Health team ultimately to fulfill that purpose. So this is kind of the you know like what's the flavoring of how do we do that? Why do we do that that way? And um, 
in some respects, the three of us are very similar. Uh, actually, it looks like just in two key variables, and then there we're different in five. Mm -hmm. So leading with the two that are, are similar, theoretical and regulatory. So theoretical leading off uh, for all of us, except Carlo's high individualistic. <coughs> <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, theoretical is essentially the desire to learn. Uh, the, the desire to intake data to improve is a, a, another way of putting it because you can have a desire to learn but not necessarily um, in relation to items that will help you improve. It's just like, I just like to take in stuff, yeah. right? Um, and I, I think <coughs> That's difficult when we have those people who want to know the answer to every single process. Like, where did this come from? Like, mm -hmm. why is this policy this way? Mm -hmm. Why is this procedure that way? Um, I think one of them comes to mind is like why we had a drug stocked in the lockbox and not in the fridge or vice versa. Remember that it was like, and it was like a decision that was made three years prior, you know, and that, that's that, that's that part. Like, I just need to know. And it's like, I don't have time right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we all share that uh, at a, I, I would, I would say the easiest adjective is at a functional level. So I'm, I'm, you know, I personally, I don't seek every piece of information that's out there and available. I tend to want to learn as it directly relates to how I can improve myself. I do read uh, enough, but it's typically directional. I don't just read for the sake of reading. Uh, one of our other doctors likes, you know, he's like big into world history and, and you know, especially like ancient Rome, ancient Greece, all that sort of stuff. Like he's a big learner. So he, he'll learn a much wider scope. Right. Uh, not And he also has a functional learning element, but there's other stuff that goes along with it. Um, it, it so we all, we do share that. So uh, what'll, what'll happen is when we get in, in, engaged in conversation, we may have the conversation differently as it relates to behaviors, but it's going to come from a similar place. Like, hey, I we all want to learn more about what this is, um, and, and you know, like, where are we getting data from? Like, let's all talk about it. Let's Be learn very together critical about it too. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Uh, the and then the the second one in Carlos' yours is just above the standard deviation, but Katie and I's is uh, a very bit higher. Is the high regulatory. So what that means is when you are a higher regulatory type individual, and most people are, I'd honestly say about eighty. 5% of people are above the median is that um, you tend to create structure where structure is limited. So if you get into a scenario where it's kind of chaos, you will put form to it. Low regulatory will see form and intentionally go against it to tr sometimes just to be a douche, <laughs> sometimes to find uh, the, the the inherent weaknesses or even potential strengths outside of what's yeah. already there. Um, yeah, that's it, what it, we've said for years. Like Katie makes rules and I make rules with the intent of breaking them. Like yes. and it's just it, again being that theoretical component. I just want to find a better rule. Like, mm -hmm. I just want to assume the rule we have is broken, mm -hmm. um, even though it is functional. I just want to find out how we can break it. Um, right. It isn't great from an administration standpoint because then you're flip-flopping constantly. And it's like, well, what is the actual rule on that? I don't know. It's been Usually seven Usually my rules. question is, when you want to break the rule, have we actually followed the rule enough <laughs> That we know it's not working. Right. That's, that's, I'm fine with breaking the rule when it's not working. But if we have a rule in place, but we haven't even been following it, we don't actually know whether it's work, uh, whether it's going to have the intended outcome or not. And if we haven't been following it, we probably don't even need it anyway. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to just go ahead and just say I disagree right. significantly. <laughs> well, that's not fair because both you guys are yes, high regulatory. You are being teamed up on right now. Exactly. <laughs> Let Get the over implementers it. implement uh, yeah, crap. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, honestly, though, but I mean, to that to that exact point, that was the that we talked about it quite a while ago was the delegation of responsibility. Mm -hmm. So it was actually getting out of the way and being like, listen, we're all very high critical. We're high theoretical. Let's sit down, actually talk through this entire entire problem mm -hmm. critically and theoretically trying to learn as much as we can about it when we come upon the rule carlo get the fuck out of the way right <laughs> you know like and that's and i get that in a lot of different things like with our uh, main accounting firm it's the oh, same sure, thing yeah. mm -hmm. you know they're like you need to go do vet things and that's what you are good at just get out of the way of all these accounting rules because that's it right so i mean that's a it's strictly rule-based industry that i'm like well i mean we have to do all of them they're like yeah. yes that's the, <laughs> how <laughs> money yes. works don't go to prison yes. let us do our job <laughs> right get out of the way yep. um, and that was the first time where it was actually a very healthy 
circumstance in my life where the responsibility the responsibility was delegated for me. Yeah. You know, it was like, we are just taking this from you and you don't have anything to say about it and mm-hmm. just go do other things you're good at. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then it worked, right? So, right. you know, and then here we are. To pair along with both of these, though, is uh, is another thing that we're going to get to. Is the f- but is the fact that you can also think and communicate extremely conceptually. So you can, even though you might see a system and not necessarily want to put all of the rules to it and create the structure and then ultimately implement the structure, which would be more of a strength of Katie and myself. You understand it yeah. at the very least, and and when push comes to shove. I know you can write a one A I two B <laughs> policy. Yes. You just don't want to. Yeah. That's not why you get out of bed in the morning. No. You no. you may be able to yeah. do it. Yeah. But again, it's just lean it, it's it's the only reason I bring that up is because it you are not locked into the fact that you're even uh, you know within the standard deviation of a regulatory type motivator or even l- just comparatively lower yeah. you're able to do that you're able to create structure if you have to yeah. but most of the time what it does is it feeds another motivator if it's lower so going to uh, the rest of these, which we are, uh, between the three of us, very dynamic amongst all three of these variables, <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll go, I guess we'll go right to left, we're already doing it, is altruism. So um, I'm actually low altruism. Uh, uh, Carlo, you're kind of in the middle, and Katie, yours is the highest of the three of us. Altruism is exclusively the desire to help for the sake of helping. The way that I like to describe highly altruistic people is those that volunteer at a soup kitchen, get spit on, and smile. They appreciate it because like, they just know that the value of what they're doing for somebody else is is in is in fact valuable, uh, it, or I should say the value is present. But for myself, I'm actually very low. So uh, what it is is I don't necessarily want to just help for the sake of helping, but I'm high economic. I right. want to help when there's a return. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for you, Carlo, uh, you'll help people if it feeds theoretical, if it feeds learning, and also if it feeds kind of doing things your way. <laughs> <laughs> and, if uh, I'm teaching. And this it. is when we start to make fun of each other, yes. by the way. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I, mean, that's, I mean, that's part of it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, helping, helping to teach, helping to learn. I mean, that's the foundation of our onboarding performance and mentorship. You're exactly right. Like, I think it, way in the beginning, I would say I want to take a mentee or an employee. I want to take them from one place and uh, bring them to where they want to go. Like mm-hmm. getting, getting that type of a return on knowledge base and learning and, hey, look at all these things I learned. I want to teach it to you. And that's right. It. And that actually goes with the fact that both of you are almost polar opposite of me in terms of economics. So economic, uh, we're jumping ahead a little bit, but that is not necessarily like financially. Uh, it, it is uh, ultimately the return on investment. Low economic is motivated by duty. So uh, sure. this goes back to the, 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 the flavor of the conversation that we've had multiple times in the fact that you've already equ- you know, achieved the goals that you thought you were going to achieve. Um, so now it's like I, it's, it's my duty to see these, you know, those that are in the education system sure. and, and serve them in a way that's going to be proficient and allow them to obtain the level of success that's even beyond what even I can do. Right. Um, so for, but so like you're, w- you're willing to help so long as it's within the con, you know, typically within the confines of that. For me, it's like, I see the individual, I see potential. I want to, I want to see the return on that potential, uh, what I, what I, I warn people on t- uh, very often is if, if you don't want to receive it, typically you're not going to get it from me ever. I don't feel motivated to that I'd have to serve you in, in one yeah. way or another. So if you and I are willing to have a tough conversation and advance and continue to return on the time investment, I will never stop giving. Yeah. However, you start kicking back at me or, or even providing that, well, we just do this this way because it's always been done this right, way. Right. I'm out. Right. Like, I just right. tend to leave. So yeah. um, I understand that there's strengths in that because I, I know the p- 
power that I can put into that, but also the fact that I can also bail out really, really fast. (laughs) So having both sides uh, on our team is, is extremely beneficial because it offsets one another. I can, I can look at you and say, you're, you're putting too much into this. Yes. And you can look at me and say, no, we need to put into this. Yeah. We haven't put in enough. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Which I mean, again, I think we're, for me, I think what I have always hooked on when we've had those conversations where, again, maybe I'm putting too much in, you know, mm-hmm. into one particular individual, um, it's because I see the value in learning. Mm-hmm. Like, I think where I am more likely to let someone go, and I think part of that is release forgiveness, but just to let someone go, mm-hmm. it's when they stop learning and they stop allowing right. us to teach. And, and ultimately, that's what, it. Right. But that, what we've pretty much turned that into yeah. is w- if you're not willing to learn, are you really here to serve the patient? Yes. Right. Right. We've pretty much determined the answer to that is no. Right. Like we're, if you guys have been doing this longer yeah. than anybody for yeah. the most part in our clinic yeah. and you're continuing to learn every single day. Yeah. So that's yeah. the expectation. That's, that's how we, that's how we serve the patient. Yeah. That's how we educate caregivers too. And, yeah. and if we're not learning how, and how can we hold ourselves to the standard of educating? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, they all, yeah, it all plays my, right off of that's that. That's my release. That's it. Mm-hmm. it just, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think there's any place for. And stagnant. Uh, well, but the thing is, uh, your leash is longer <laughs> than mine and Katie's. Yes. Uh, yes. So yes. that actually is uh, shown yes. directly in the aesthetic motivator. So you prefer to create harmony. Yeah. Um, you prefer your. You, that's why I say your leash is longer. Like you're going to give somebody more slack in the opportunity for them to learn generally than Katie and I will. Um, but what that does is it also limits uh, your uh, approach towards conflict, towards tougher conversations, tend to be a little bit softer about it, which is then ultimately amplified by your behavioral tendencies, too, right. of being a higher I. Right. So, um, which is why Annie does her job very well. That's why <laughs> Annie's job <laughs> exists, <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, yes. It, 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 I mean, to, to have accountable conversations on a continuous basis does kind of require a specific type of person um and what you learned however long ago is like you're probably not that guy um makes you uncomfortable you're not again you're not incapable of doing it but it's like yeah it's gonna be slower it's gonna be less efficient it's also just gonna make me uncomfortable let's find somebody else that wants to do this Um, so, so then uh, Katie, yours falls in the middle. So you're, again, that's going to go, uh, to- more towards like, you're willing to have the tough conversation. You're willing to create conflict when necessary, but again, it's going to feed some of your other tendencies, excuse me. Um, again, leaning more towards theoretical, you're going to, if you have to, you will create conflict in the essence of learning. You're also going to be extremely direct about it in the way that you talk about it. Um, but ultimately, it comes from a good place when tough words are said. Right. Um, and then for myself, again, being very low, I love to rock the boat. I literally like... I like to make people uncomfortable because uh, for those that actually everybody that's listening to this probably doesn't know, I do coach a high school bowling team. And when I'm teaching them something, I will ask, is that uncomfortable? Yes. Does it hurt? No. Good. That means you're learning. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like don't injure yourself, but push the boundaries. Like, the uh, the, when i was learning how to play golf you know like the the best golf swing in the world is one of the most uncomfortable things you can do until you really learn how to do it it doesn't make sense your body doesn't want to do it but it works Mm -hmm. really really well so you know sports metaphors but um (laughs) (laughs) it what it what it does shine to is i'm really going to create a level of discomfort if i see potential in somebody i'm gonna call them on their shit because I see the fact that they yeah. can excel far beyond what maybe they even see. Yeah. Um, partially self-taught because I, you yeah. know, I used to not see a whole lot of potential in myself. Sure, it's like, yeah. let's just let's just be great. Yeah, <laughs> screw it. <laughs> yes. and it does require some some yes. uh, discipline along the way for sure. Self-worth. But uh, but a lot of times, and this, uh, you know, it's feeding more towards a, a, even a generational type aspect. Um, those that are um, typically are, that are younger south of 30 tend to be very low self-esteem um, and don't necessarily see the value in themselves. So I will aggressively sometimes state the value that they have 
because they don't maybe see it. Like I'm, and I'm going to say things that maybe make them yeah. uncomfortable, but not because I just want to be a jerk about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think uh, one of our uh, newer uh, CSS employees, she had shared a meme to me recently about believing in yourself. The context included two raccoons and stuff, so we don't really have to get into <laughs> that. Um, however, uh, that being said, the message uh, there. Trash pandas. Yeah, it was trash pandas. Um, was to, like, essentially she was sharing a meme to me about, like, believe in yourself, you yes. know? And I was like, I feel like that's who we're essentially becoming or who maybe we are, or who we're viewed as, you know, is just saying, like, our, our whole process of education and investment in the employee and, you know, some of us are going to, you know, be a little bit more direct or, you know, putting into an uncomfortable place or whatever it is. It's like, but really at the end of the day, it's showing those people who are in that south of 30-year-old category and just being like, just go for it. Right. You know, I mean, just just have it. Just go out and try to get it. Um, and I mean, whatever you want to call the conditioning that has led them to that point of low self-worth, which we know in our profession, when we talked about our industry overview, we know where that loss of self-worth is coming from, at least um, very topically. Yep. Um, but to then say, no, we have the ability to help you grow if you're just willing to come to the party. Right. Right. Like, just hold the purpose. Yes. Like, yes. we'll let you be you. Yeah. And actually, we're going to encourage you yes. heavily to be yourself. Most of the time, yes. Um, un in understanding the fact that you do have strengths, you do have weaknesses, know what they are, be self-aware, and capitalize on what you can do. Yep. Um, but don't feel like there's some major limiter to what you actually can do. Yeah. And Or if there is, acknowledge what it is and delegate it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, that, and the, the way that we do that for the three of us comes from a different place. Mm -hmm. Um, it, 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 but it also does provide a, again, a dynamic effort from, from yep. the four of us. So the other, the other two that are in here and I did kind of touch on it cause Carlo, yours is high. Mine's low. Katie's our nice offset in the middle with individualistic, uh, preference to do things your way. <laughs> Uh, I, the, the way that I've worded it for myself, just as a means to inflate my ego is I prefer to do things the right way, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, not necessarily my way. Yes. Um, but uh, really what it is, is, uh, this one actually tends to be, I think one of the most, uh, taught family, uh, variables. I think people tend to get individualistic. In the individualistic motivator mostly from family uh yeah. in like how did like did my parents really hold it uh i i mean i don't want to speak you know positively or negatively as it relates to i don't think we need to bring mom and dad to this katie no <laughs> <laughs> right. but uh it, it does seem to be taught uh yeah. mostly within a household because it's like well how I, how much do we have to go with the way that mom and dad did it? Yeah. Sure. And like, is that the way that I tend to have to behave as yeah. a means to, uh, to get things done? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like that was for me to be high theoretical and high individualistic. I think that's actually where a lot of my like, you know, mid high school age issues came into it is I was so like theoretical and so, you know, uh, soaking up of data that then my interpretation, like you said, of how my parents are doing it, it's like, oh, actually the way they're doing it is highly inefficient, you know, or yeah. the way they're doing it, not necessarily wrong, but it's mm -hmm. one of those where it's just like, oh no, I'm actually fairly certain my way would be better. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not going to say like, you know, you know, small engine repair, you know, I mean, those types of things, like there are very mechanical things that need to be done a certain way, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, uh, the high individualistic. <laughs> so uh, this one is, is probably one of the most uh, polarizing ones because uh, when you pair two individuals that are high individualistic but disagree on how to do something yeah it that's one of our your biggest areas of potential conflict where if they don't understand how they're communicating and where it's coming from it can go from disagreeing on how to interpersonal conflict really fast yeah i always put that one out there as a big red flag because you need to be aware of the fact that you're not necessarily standing on the fact that you want to have conflict you're just on your idea yeah and like it's, it's I feel okay like, to hold it. Yeah, I feel like I push harder on the individualistic side when there is, like, error. 
you know, yes. error or and then potentially conflict where it's like, well, this obviously went this way because you're not doing it my way, you know, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, so it's kind of like in hindsight, not to say that that's an appropriate way to approach it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, however, I think, like you said, like sometimes when we have our leadership meetings, there's a problem on the table. We're looking at it from four different ways. Mm-hmm. I have had a hard time turning down that radio station. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I just need to take a deep breath and drink water and just shut up for a few minutes so everyone else can talk. Mm-hmm. You know, it's or, tough. Or when we turned the industry overview into to-dos, you <laughs> literally had to leave the room. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I think I was, I was uninvited from yep. that meeting and yep. I think it was, was it a couple? Uh, uh, no, it, it was, was the end. It was the end of one meeting and I believe the beginning of the next one. Right. Yeah. There I was, just wasn't allowed to be there for mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But it worked. <laughs> um, oh my god, I forgot about that. That I'll is never amazing. Forget that. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you weren't uh, laughing at the time. No, <laughs> no, you were loitering outside the door, <laughs> <laughs> just pacing <laughs> with the door uh, window yes. as you're just walking past yeah. it every just ten like, seconds. God damn it! Uh, yeah. But it, but it is uh, a, a good thing to to note. Because th- uh, there is big strength too. Like if you really believe in in the fact that it is right, there's nothing wrong with having a soapbox and standing on it when it is necessary. Yeah. That you can use that skill set. The big key to that one is self awareness. Because the other side is like for me, like I'll tend to actually uh, uh, I, I refer to myself as a charismatic enigma. Or actually, am <laughs> I will actually adapt to the way that I behave to the way that other people are because I don't really hold myself. And like the way that I uh-huh. think about something in that high of a regard, um, it's just what happens. Yeah. I know that's where it comes from. Yeah. I know that there's strength to that because I can mold myself to a room really, really fast. <laughs> but I also then the chameleon. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> but then I end up in a situation where I say correct all the time now because that's the way that you speak. Like I, we picked that, I picked that directly up from you. I know that I did. Yeah. I used to say right, right a lot. Now I don't say right anymore. Yeah. I say correct. Yeah. Or if I'm around somebody that says um a lot, I, I will just I will just start to say it. Um, yeah, see, mine's just the yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Or I started doing that. Oh, did you? And I was like, that needs to stop. Yeah. <laughs> The click, point, yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah, the 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 yeah. Carlo click point, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, the last one that's on here as we're just gonna aggressively move forward is uh, political. So uh, political is not necessarily the desire to get into politics. Uh, it is the higher the political motivator, the more um, you desire to have your opinion be heard when decisions are being made that impact you directly. Mm-hmm. So um, lower political people, uh, which we do not have sitting at this table, are going to be... Um, yeah, I don't even know how you would function with... Well, you just go with the flow. Uh, gotcha. It's the, it's the... I'm okay with it. Like, I'll let them lead. Like, I'm okay with gotcha. being a, a, a part of the machine. Gotcha. Um, I'm, 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 I have no issue going with the direction that gotcha. is set for me. I just want to facilitate it well. A lot of trust is included in that. Gotcha. Um, and sometimes misguided guided if that's fair yes, yeah. um but but we don't we are, between the three of us we don't uh, we actually don't fall below the standard deviation uh the both the, you you two are are in the, in the within the standard deviation which basically says like you can go with the flow when you ultimately know that it is the right direction um so that's going to offset your higher individualistic where it's like when it is proven that it, it like that's the right way like I've gotten you to come off your your guard a, a number of times. Oh yeah. Um. Uh, per, so it, it it just make a good case, right? Yep. Um. And then higher political, like I really like if you're gonna ask me for my opinion, you're or gonna it's it. gonna impact me, like you're gonna get it. <laughs> and I really just like, we don't have to go that way yeah. necessarily, but listen. Yeah. So <laughs> when you send the email, that's like, hey, check this signage out, and. <laughs> And then the decision is made before the opinion is heard. Like, <laughs> I I got so mad, so mad. No, not you didn't get so mad. You're still so I'm mad. still bitter. But I'm but ultimately gets, a, gets the email about what do you think about this signage, and then just railroaded. Just <laughs> railroaded. Just <laughs> like, decisions were made, and you weren't allowed to put input, even though we asked your input. Yep. Yep. <laughs> 
Uh, for those of you that ever feel very frustrated when that happens, <laughs> this is the variable that yes. di- is directly related to yeah. that. Um, or if, uh, this is another thing that rather than going the joke method here, yes. if you think about corporatized medicine, yes. if you're a high political person, typically if you're being told what to do without being provided the context of why you're going to directly balk at it because it's like, well, there's no, I don't see the value in this. What I'm doing is working. Tell me why, or let me do it my way. Right. Um, because you never asked for my opinion on this matter. Yeah. The higher, the more hierarchy, the less you, the low, you know, the, the lower level, they're going to have those opinions heard, the less value that they're going to feel like they're putting into the system. That's one of the primary reasons why I rarely, if ever will fit into a large corporate structure like that. Um, and I think, uh, as, as a, as a general tendency to because of the politicized environment outside of work that we have culturally this tends to be more and more of a highlight that individuals have um, as the workforce is turning over so listening to people this is the listen first then engage right is is a way to motivate people uh, on, on an equal level not necessarily telling them that they have to do things their way but hey I'll take input um, when you pair um, individualistic with political, it can get a little bit difficult because they want their opinion to be heard and they really want it to do it their way. Um, uh, when you pair those two with low aesthetic, they're also going to create conflict to make that happen. Um, if they have that and low regulatory, you now it's like, holy cow, they're just going to break the system, right? But generally the extremes of those examples don't exist. Uh, But, but if they do understand the fact that they do. (laughs) Um, So the, the, the the disc profile, which is the behavioral, the how uh, paired with the why of the values index tends to color the overwhelming majority of our uh, interactions with people on a day-to-day basis. Uh, If you were to take just these two pieces, um, number one, this is... uh, uh, the, the pretty much the majority of what Myers Briggs is built off of number one, but we don't place you in a box. Uh, it, it is more just revolving around your tendencies rather than saying who you are. And uh, it, you can use this material uh, in considering your day to day interactions um, yeah, in just understanding these two. And it provides you a whole lot of insight into what is happening. The reason that I say that, though, is because there's also a third element, uh, which we're going to get to here, um, and it, it won't take as long because there's fewer variables, but um, my, the, my, the, my favorite uh, example of utilizing this data was like within the first two weeks of me being exposed to it in that I had my mom and my brother take uh, this assessment. Oh, sure. I don't know if I've ever told you this story. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think you told me, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was unrecorded content, but yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Basically, um, they, they love each other. There's no like riffs or anything, but they're really, really good at fighting with each other. Like just I, I'm, when there's ideas being discussed. And I was like, I was just curious. You know, like, is there a data point that tells me why? You know, is it a motivator or whatever it might be? Uh, behaviorally, the two of them are almost identical. And on a values index, they were almost identical. And it's like, well, if I take those two pieces, I don't see where the lapse is here. Where is the conflict really coming from? Is it just because they're tired of hearing themselves in the other person? Well, not really. Um, so that takes us to the the third uh, set of data. And this is split into two parts, and we're going to focus on the left side, the three blue bars, is that uh, our brain's Uh, tend to take in data and process it in different uh, segments of variables. And what we found was that my brother is a very systems judgment type thinker. He's a why thinker. He's a gray thinker. He likes to consider all of the variables and then start to kind of devil's advocate within all of them. He's also an attorney. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Um, my mom is a software engineer, very practical, very black and white, loves bookkeeping, like really just yes, no type answers. And so what would happen is they would talk about the same subject, but they would actually see 
see themselves in the other person, but they would never actually hear each other because one was talking about one set of variables and the other one was talking about the other, even though they thought they were talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's very, fr like when you just feel like you're not being heard, like that can create a level of frustration. Yeah. And, you know, ultimately it's not really that big of a deal. Like most of the time it's political stuff that's just dumb, but it is, <laughs> it is funny right. uh, when you think about it that way, because the way that you, um, consider data can ultimately be the thing that creates a level of to the point of interpersonal conflict how you are seeing a situation uh can greatly impact uh the way that you you behave because of it but also you know how it interacts with your values mm -hmm. so and that's the kind of idea behind there is no truth there is only interpretation so if you're taking in data mm -hmm. differently right. about a particular interaction, it's like, well, both sides are technically a reality, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which does become very difficult, um, right. uh, sort of that, that dimensional balance. So uh, the, these three parts, uh, empathy is, uh, the, the, the way that I describe it is, uh, basically you have three radios in front of you. The higher the bar, the more clear, the louder it is. Um, but empathy all the way on the left is going to be information uh, about the, the people. Uh, it's reading the room. Uh, it's, it's understanding um, the emotional, like it, it's that, it, that feeling of emotion when it is in the air, right? Uh, the second practical, that's black and white. It's seeing a solution, develop, or seeing a problem, developing a solution. It's the, 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 the one to two step type solution. And then systems judgment is the gray type thinking. It's the thinking about how the heck do we get here and where's this going to take, where's this decision going to take us five to 10 steps from now? Um, those three different things, again, uh, these are like muscles. So we're all able to think about them and we're actually all able to, um, engage them to the point where we can improve upon them. Uh, but, uh, ultimately we do have uh, tendencies and preferences built into them as well. Um, Carlo, <laughs> uh, leading, uh, the charge with empathy, uh, also pairs with a uh, high aesthetic, low economic and a uh, higher S. So that's where the leash comes from. So you understand the, uh, the emotional engagement when you are having those, when you're behaving in a specific way from a specific value, you can also do it well. So it, it, it enables a quality conversation when you're engaging those specific variables. If you're a high, high S, high, high aesthetic, even sometimes high altruistic, but low empathy, you're tr you can try to do it well, or you can try to do it, but you're probably not going to do it well because you're not reading the person the right way. Yeah. Um, so that <laughs> I've seen that. I just, I think of a couple examples and it just makes me laugh every time. But, um, you go from that one to black and white type thinking <clears throat> frog in my throat. We actually, uh, we, we all have it. We don't tend to think about that. That tends to be actually our lowest, uh, but especially between the two of you because systems judgment, um, and, and it tends to come before that, uh, or, uh, it, especially as uh, for you, Katie, um, as well as for myself, because we've started to really understand the value of thinking about how all these things fit together. Right. Um, not that we're incapable of creating now solutions, um, and we do them often. We just don't really think that way on, as a general rule, um, which is, I think it's funny that, um, Carlo, that's actually your second variable, <laughs> even though we always joke that you're the most conceptual thinker. Right. <laughs> um, so what, what is actually being perceived there is Katie, you're able to do it. You just tend to be, you just have it in up in here and then you say the result right. whereas you you carlo will communicate all the way from one to twenty to ten and people will be like wow i didn't know i had that question but now yeah. i have the answer to it yeah. uh and, and there is uh, yeah. definitely uh, value in both of those mm -hmm. but again all this is doing is is flavoring how we tend to behave why we tend to behave the way that we do what information are we using to do that? Um, he, he, the other thing too to of of note, what you'll notice is um, 
my my three uh, uh, variables tend to be a little bit lower than uh, Carlos and Katie's. I weirdly enough am not actually a very fast thinker. <laughs> um, I uh, although I am intelligent. Uh, it takes me some time. I'm a slow reader. Um, it, it, it is a processing speed type item. So you guys are actually able to take in data faster than I am. Um, not, not to say that there's anything wrong with being a slower processing speed individual. It's just understand what you got and understand right. that like it's going to take me some more time. Therefore, I'm going to budget more time to Therefore, get Therefore, you needed another day to respond to the design email. Exactly. <laughs> I needed Railroaded. to contemplate railroad. <laughs> Railroaded. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just mad now. Mad. I'm just mad now. Yeah. Uh, Even though we don't practice it, you need the release type of forgiveness. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I, I guess you know, there's not really a lot of intense conversation to have about these specific items because this one is really about self awareness. The other two, uh, the other the, the the disc as well as the values index. There's a, a heavy amount of of comparative nature to that, but really with these three, it's like, what am I really considering here? Am I missing something? Do I have a blind spot? Um, for some individuals, I have seen you know like a nine empathy, like an eight practical thinking, like a four on systems judgment. They just don't think conceptually. And it's not because they're, you know, m m uh, malintent or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's they just they were never taught it. They never yeah. do it. So with all of that, you know, like we're we're relatively balanced. We can have conversations on multiple fronts. But this also allows us an insight into an individual's way of thinking. So if we're really not communicating well, but we like it feels OK, we feel like it's coming from the right place. What the heck is missing? Oh, they're not seeing this set of variables that I see very clearly. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's uh, it, it's again, it's really mostly about self-awareness. The more you understand your own strengths and your own weaknesses, the better. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, 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 I am going to shut up for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah, again, like I said, this being kind of the third part, that dimensional balance, you know, like you said, it, it is a, a little bit more flavor to it uh, kind of behind the scenes. And I think that's when we start to talk about like this in the moment accountability and actions behind the scenes and what's happening in your head, how you processing data. That's kind of what this sort of speaks to, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just like you said, you can have people who have very similar profiles in the first two or there's not a ton of conflict there. But when there is conflict, it's kind of just that. You know, the are they seeing the whole picture or are they just, you know, is it, is it our, you know, uh, A, B, C, D employee mm -hmm. or is it the A1, A2, A3, A4 versus B1, B2, B3, B4 type employee? Right. Like you said, it's that difference. Between, so that's, I think, where you can start to generate unnecessary conflict is if you have a group of people that maybe lean more towards that systems judgment and they're like, they can kind of see the gray, they can kind of see the big picture, um, you know, they can kind of function a bit more in that sort of A, B, C, D type environment, but then to have to boil down policy into the individual pieces, I think can be very difficult saying, Oh my God, I have to explain the whole process to you. Right. You know? So I think that's where, you know, in, in that part, it's again, it's, it's good to acknowledge that, you know, like you said, there's conflict there, but we're on the same page and mm -hmm. it seems like we're thinking about this the same way, but there's still something that's not right. You know, sometimes it's just that, you mm -hmm. know, as it's like, Oh, well you're looking at it on the, ABC, you know, the, the individual list type items versus right. the concept. And some of our conversations are conceptual and some of our questions are list, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just in, in a work environment, you're going to have both. And, and that's probably from a, from a training perspective. Again, I'm, I lean systems. I prefer systems. Um, but one of the hardest things for me to actually coach people on is like, I can see the solution. I'm going to give you the ABCD and like, I'm going to allow you to fill in the gaps a little bit. Um, and then when you, when you don't, it's like, you're like, come on, man, like, <laughs> you can do this. I believe in you, yeah. but you just don't know how. And like, I, I, I do preface everybody. Like if you know, ask the question first, I will, I will say that that is very important. Yeah. Um, but ultimately like. I do want to just give the yeah, ABC. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we do share that uh, pretty substantially. Yes, yes. Um, that's what is ideal. But you know, that's fine. If ideal in to. our world. Yes, ideal in ours. Yes. Um, yes. The, the yeah, last not so thing. Not so clear um, in others. 
the last thing I'll touch on in here is the uh, there there are indicators next to all all of the data points. The one that uh, does shine through because it is different for all three of us is the empathy. So I am a minus. I tend to be a very guarded person. Um, uh, I, I don't really share like personal stuff like ever. Um, I, and, and I also tend to have higher walls into personal life. Um, coached, you know, learned, whatever that might be. It is what it is. Um, I, I just understand that it exists. Uh, Carlo, you have an equals indicator. So your barrier is a little bit lower on the way in, but it's still there. It's still present. Um, and Katie, yours is a plus. You don't really have an issue with creating personal relationships with people. Um, now they might have an issue with it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, but uh, the the guard is lower you're not really on defense per se as it relates to relationship development Um, and then the other two uh, the indicators between practical thinking and systems judgment actually play off of each other so the both of you um, are a minus plus. So you actually have a preference in terms of systems judgment. Um, so not only do you have a tendency to do it, you also prefer to do that. So you're going to l- just lean that way pretty much most often. That's why the AB, a, A1, A2, A3 feels worse yeah. because it's like, I really just don't want to do, to do this. And I know that I can just do this A, B, C, D. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, f- but you also are able to do practical. Like it's a part of your set of variables. Yeah. And then for myself, I uh, actually am plus plus, um, you know, <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. coachable. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I will say that um, it, it was a, this is one of the ultimate variables that if I see this on a uh, new hire or an applicant's uh, assessment, they're almost guaranteed to come in. Mm-hmm. for an interview because um, typically they will be very obs- uh, 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 receptive. Receptive. I, I was going to say absorptive. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know if that's a that's word. toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be very receptive towards uh, new ways of thinking uh, as it relates to specific items. They, they don't necessarily lean towards a, sp- uh, a, a preference, whether it's the big system or the, or the short solution, which is what's the right way. Um, so those two do play off of each other. Um, if it's a minus minus, uh, that typically tends to be a very defensive person, uh, typically will be, uh, less adaptable to their environment. But again, nothing that can't really be worked through. It's about understanding where this stuff comes from. Uh, the, so that's, how we take in data. And then the, the internal, which is the red bars, uh, in terms of our specific data, doesn't really uh, apply because it's really just a, a snapshot in time of mental state. Um, which we've used as follow-up tricores. Yes. So yes. if, we have, if we have an employee that's going through, already mm-hmm. through the onboarding, uh, we've had a certain level of performance with that individual that is maybe high in the beginning and then yep. goes low somewhere as we get through the performance review and employment process. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we'll push them back through a tricor um, and just trying to identify if there's a change in the sort of internal markers mm-hmm. and saying maybe this person is having some other issue in their life that is affecting what's going on in work mm-hmm. or, you know, uh, or work or is impact work. impacting yeah. their personal life. Yeah. Right. yeah. Whatever it yeah. might be. Like, tell me where it's coming from. Yeah. Is it a self-esteem thing? Is it a role of thing is it a direction thing yeah. typically yeah. Uh, a, a significant lack of motivation can be sourced in one of those yeah. three items if not multiple yeah. and um, that's that's our if you look at those three pieces so self-esteem role awareness and self-direction that is the entire onboarding performance and mentorship mm-hmm. program that we've created mm-hmm. you know for us we want to have role awareness so you're going to be obviously be getting a job description but hey we have this entire skills rubric mm-hmm. that is just going to make you aware of what your role is within our organization and then the self-direction component to it is the interest list so where do you want to go with your ultimate career and this is what we kind of talked about like the wagons moving west are you going to stay and help build a town or are you going to move on you know continue west and saying what is sort of that self-direction you want and now it's an active process in trying to pull those pieces out of the uh, individual whether it's mm-hmm. a mentee or an employee um, and in the process of gaining role awareness and self-direction, we then 
bring into that culture, core values, purpose, um, and fulfillment and Mm -hmm. saying, Hey, now we have this whole part of self-esteem, but more importantly, it's Mm self-belief. You know, it's like, Hey, we did it. You can do it too. So really it's, you know, going through this entire tri-core process brought us to these three red bars is to say, we have really no ability to control. I mean, not to say we don't have any ability to control the other things, empathy and practical thinking. I mean, some of those things are coachable. You can teach Mm -hmm. this, make yourself aware within the team. But as far as the out, outside factors and outside influencers that we have within a corporate or at least within a business structure, a management structure, a consultation structure, Mm -hmm. that's what those three bars are. Yeah. It's, Hey, let us provide you with the tools so that these don't end up becoming a variable in the workplace while you're in here. It's kind of that same thing, like check your shit at the door. Mm -hmm. You know, we have things that can help you with, um, you know, again, self-esteem, you know, self-belief, rural awareness, uh, and self-direction. And the, and the recheck, if you will, was mostly about like, have has a an insurmountable barrier yes. been put in our way? Yes, right. Yeah. And and can we have the professional conversation about getting over it? Yes, um, because yes. if not, like and it's and it is a direct impact to your uh, alignment here. Yeah. Like, yeah. we all know what the next conversation turns yeah. into. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I don't attend performance reviews, but when I attend one, I don't attend a second. <laughs> Yes, that one. <laughs> yes. Um, so it does, it, it, that's a good way of putting it because it does come full circle with yeah. pretty much everything that we've been talking about for the last however long because um, yeah. we we do want to Im- empower the individual. We, yeah. w- we want dynamic teams. We want individuals who understand who they are, understand the strengths that they have as it relates to how they behave, why they behave the way that they do, the way that they think, um, but also um, ultimately you know, all of those lead towards the same purpose. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then you all, and then you put the structure around it to create well being. Yeah. Yep. And this is Again, exactly I'm still mad at you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I snuck in the purpose yes. and well being. Yes. 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 But it, right. but it does come full circle. I actually yeah. uh, never thought about it that way until yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it is ultimately what that does. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, again, you know, we start to say what sets us apart from other businesses and other structures. I mean, it's really that is that we're trying to find what variables we can help manage. It's not control. It's help manage in people's lives. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and at, and at the end of the day, this is tier zero. Mm -hmm. This is tier zero. Yeah. You know, we don't even have, I mean, going through all of this and we put an hour, hour and a half into it, um, you know, but at the end, this is before they even start employment or some type of uh, mentee experience with us Mm -hmm. is, is trying to gain these tools so that we can onboard uh, these individuals appropriately through uh, through the mentorship or through employee uh, employment Mm -hmm. um, to then get us into tier one. Let's talk about, you know, what is the expectation tier two, tier three, tier four Mm -hmm. um, with this type of a foundation in conjunction conjunction with what we have from a policy and procedure standpoint, there really isn't anyone who can fail if they're willing to come to the table. Right. I was going to say, we use this as a touch point at yep. all of those individual, of uh, you know, at, at forks in the road right. yep. because it's number one, are, are you aligning with the information that you yep. provided? Yep. Um, how honest are you being with yourself and with the team? Um, but, yep. but ultimately, you know, like, is that, is that going to be a great barrier, whatever the data point might be and how do we overcome it? Or like, you know, from a, from an advancement perspective, like this is like your shining light. How do we get it to burn brighter? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's, it's, uh, it's really, really helpful. And again, like this is where I, where I came from and I'm, I'm probably going to be an extremely biased opinion on it. Um, But it, it, it has, it can provide such a level of insight into an individual that uh, from from a data perspective, you can take three pieces of paper and say, this is what I see. Right. Uh, and and um, having, it, it, it provides, really it provides a, a, an objectivity yeah. to potentially emotional conversations. Yeah. Rather than me saying, my gut says yes. that you're kind of bitchy. <laughs> right. <laughs> or that... Uh, like, or, or that you're just leaning to, you're just trying to do things your way right, right, or, right. or that you're really not seeing the big picture. Right. Like, well, I'm going to attack you back now because <laughs> I feel like you're attacking me. <laughs> right. Uh, yes. No, it's like, no, like this set of data, like preempted us for that. 
And yes. we understood that there was some, some inherent risk or some uh, potential strength there, whatever it might be. And this is how it is now being realized. How do we use it? How do we delegate it? How do we make you as an effective member of the team as possible? F again, from an objective standpoint, mm -hmm. eliminating the emotional element of it. Yeah. So yeah. no, I, th I think it's, I think it's a wonderful tool tool. And I just, yeah, I, I, I think we should probably adjourn. I agree. Yes. You guys got to pack. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've gone to Michigan State. They got to. They're go, They're got to get on a plane. So. Yes. 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 Um, yeah, it was a. It was a pleasure. I yeah, hope. Okay. Did you have fun? Yeah. I yeah. love. Love hearing about how wonderful my high D is. Yeah, I love it. It's the greatest. I love, strength. It. <laughs> I love it. There are there are some days I love it. Some days yeah. that I've hated it in my life. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, yeah. we all we all have our strengths and weaknesses. So, yes. um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we're not hundred percent sure where next week's going to no, take us I, yet. No, I don't think. But yeah, they're following me. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I think. Yeah, we're going to have to. We'll figure, figure it out. out. Yeah, we, we do every time. Either way, yeah. I think you guys should tune in next week. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys right. gotta get out of here. Yeah, so. all right, guys. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. Yep. <laughs>